الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد وفي القرآن الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أو كما قال صدقت يا رسول الله الكريم أيها الحبة في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته What a magnificent opportunity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with He has given us the opportunity knowing very well that the day we are born there's only one guarantee we have and that is كل نفس ذائقة الموت That's the only guarantee we have. Al-hayatu kalam hil basar. Life is like a wink of an eyelid. Dunya sa'a. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this dunya is just but in one hour. Sometimes when a person has a near-death experience, they feel like their life is flashing all in front of them, the entire life within a few moments that it's just a short time and the haqiqah and the reality is when we are when we go inshallah into the akhirah we will realize that this time we spent on earth is extremely minuscule in comparison to the larger scheme of time alhamdulillah we have the best manual of instruction in Al-Qur'an. And this is why I re recited the hadith. Inna khayr al-hadith kitabullah. The best speech is the kitabullah. Even if I, tonight, wallahi, is not the night of speeches. Even if we just recite Qur'an, that is far superior and far better than anything I could say. The best time we have spent this month, wallahi, Allah is my witness, uqsim billah is the time when the Imam said Allahu Akbar and we were listening to the Quran. The best moments after Surah Al-Fatiha and we're reciting the Surah. No better speech. Nothing can compare. Nothing I can say is going to in any way even come close to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us when he says inna anzalnahu we know that we have the haq, the truth. We know we have the best guide in Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know this for a fact. There's not a person sitting here in this masjid who at 3 a.m. is sitting here because he does not believe. He's sacrificing his sleep he is here only for one reason, because he know he knows for a fact that Allah is his Rabb and Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his Imam and Al-Quran Al-Kareem is his companion. That's what would make us sacrifice the most important time of our sleep to get up for tahajjud. It's because the penny has dropped in our mind. We know this for a fact. 
And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the perfect deen, the perfect way of life. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally makes it impossible for anyone who follows the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of love. Listen to me carefully, Jama'ah. Following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of love. Worshipping Allah out of love. As long as we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of love and we follow the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of love, inshallah, we should be okay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by virtue of this following out of love, He makes it impossible for us to go to Jahannam. It's like... You've got to really work very hard. You've got to really extend yourself to go to Jahannam. Because قَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأْخِرَ Whoever makes the Qiyam of Ramadan with Iman and proper accountability, all your past sins are forgiven. Then he gives you Rahma and maghfira. The first 20 days. Even if you miss that boat, he gives you the last 10 days. Even in our complacency, because we know we have Islam and the Prophet is there to give us shafa'a and to give us intercession. And even if we miss that boat because we were lazy, he gives us one night. Laylatul Qadr Khairu min al and خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٌ One night, trying to say it's better than 83 years and 4 months. Absolutely not. That's not what the Quran is trying to tell us. In the Arabs, in the, in the old days, the Arabs used to use, when they wanted to say a really long time, a lifetime and beyond, they used to say a thousand months. That's what the Quran is trying to tell us because it was revealed in the Arabic language and we must understand the Arabic culture and nuances that existed. And if that is not, the Mashaykh tell us very clearly, even Imam Shafi mentions it, that the first day of Rajab, 15th of Sha'aban, if you catch the first day of Rajab or you catch the 15th day of Sha'aban, or you catch the night of Laylatul Fitr with Iman and Ihtisab. You have hit the jackpot, literally. Or the night of Eid al Adha. They speak about these days. The night of Qadr. Inshallah, tonight could be the night of Qadr, inshallah. Say, Ameen. Even if it is not the night of Qadr. If you make dua, Ya Allah, make this qadr for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make the impossibility possible. He makes it very difficult for us to attain anything but Jannah. The only condition is, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةٍ we transgress, we lose hope. But no matter whatever happens, do not lose faith in the hope of Allah. Don't lose faith in the hope of Allah. See, a beautiful surah recited tonight by the Egyptian Qari, Surah Maryam. Kaf, ha, Ya Ain Saad. You know this when these verses were revealed, the Makkans were perplexed. I mean Imam al Balazuri says only in the whole Arabian Peninsula, the whole Arabian Peninsula, not more than thirteen, maximum nineteen people could read or write. That means only maximum of nineteen people in the whole Arabian Peninsula, which is 
about nine countries today, only a maximum of 19 people knew that they exist words like kaf, ha, ya, ayn, sod. These are letters of the alphabet. And here the Prophet وسلم, they know that he is, he has not studied the language. He does not know the letters. He does not know how to read and write. And here he's telling them about the letters of the Arabic language. Kaf, ha, ya, ayn, sod. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in such a way that there's no such word in their understanding that exists like kaf, ha, ya, ayn, sod. Trying to tell them, you claim to know so much and you're a master of the Arabic language. Okay, explain to us what is kaf, ha, ya, ayn, sod. If they want to know, they've got to ask now Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The reason I'm mentioning the surah, Ya Jamaat al Muslimi, because after this, Kaf ha ya ayn sa'ad, Dhikru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya. Tonight, inshallah, let us remember Zakariya alayhi salam. Why? You might ask, what has Zakariya got to do with this? Let's go further. Because the Quran was revealed to us in the first person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal the Quran for us so that we can memorize it and read it so beautifully but don't understand a single word. Absolutely not. It's our instruction manual for life. It helps us with troubleshooting. It helps us to be able to be more efficient to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot go through life, ya Jamaat al Muslim. We really cannot. Tilka idan qismatun diza. It is a travesty if we go through life and not at least once trying to read the Quran with meaning. So Sayyidina Zakariya said, إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيًّا Why do we mention Sayyidina Zakariya? Because Sayyidina Zakariya is teaching us how to make dua to Allah. إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ Nida'an khafiyya. It's as if he's calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala urgently. Like, help me, save me. I'm about to drown. With real conviction that he's really in a predicament. And he calls in, in secret. In a quiet moment between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tonight, we would like to hone in on Sayyidina Zakaria. We've spoken about Sayyidina Musa. We've spoken about Sayyidina Isa during the, the journeys to the tafsir of the Quran. We spoke about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Sayyidina Ismail we mentioned. And absolutely our master, Al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi salam. But Sayyidina Zakaria is teaching us because tonight, ya Jamaat al muslimin we have to focus genuinely if we really want this night to work for us. It's no use. We spend the whole night in the masjid. We have submitted our leave for work already. So people know this brother is going to Quds. He's not coming to work tomorrow. He's going to spend the whole night there. But if we are not going to, we are, we're going to miss the target. We are not going to be able to achieve if the main purpose for us coming here tonight, we have not been able to manifest it or personify it into action. So Sayyidina Zakaria is calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيَّةً See, if you want to understand the importance of the khususiyah of zaman, that means the speciality and the timing and khususiyah of makan, the timing of the place, the special nature of the time and the special nature of the, taste, the, the space and the of insan, the special nature of the environment of people that exist. Let's go back to the time he interacted with his niece, Sayyidatina Maryam. Salam. You know when his, her, her mother was concerned when she was pregnant and she made a vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the baby in my tummy, I will dedicate it, Ya Allah, into your service. إِذْ قَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ عِمْرَانَ رَبِّ إِنِّي نَظَوْتُ لَكَمَا فِي بَطْنِي مُحَرَّرًا فَتَقَبَّلْ مِنِّي 
إنك أنت السميع العليم. This is now the munaja between the mother of Maryam عليه السلام and Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Asking him to accept her offering. And what happened? She gave birth absolutely to a beautiful baby. But the baby turned out to be a girl. Similar society like what we have today. How is the girl going to be the imam? The boy and the girl are not the same. You know today how much difficulty they're giving our sisters up north to attend the masjid. Wallahi, sisters, we must make shukr that alhamdulillah we are living in an environment where both our males, mothers and fathers have equal access to the masjid. وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمْ وَإِنِّي عِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Allah said, don't worry. فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ Allah accepted. That's why Sayyidatina Maryam became Stafaki ala nisai la alameen. She was the best chosen woman. Then the verses go on further. Sayyidina Zakariya then comes. فَلَمَّا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَ الْمِحْرَابِ So Sayyidina Zakariya comes to the mihrab. وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِشْقَ He finds... He finds in the mihrab she's sitting and praying to Allah. Now say that in Maryam when she's praying in the mihrab, you must understand that is now in terms of levels of prayer, it's right up there. Her connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the chasteness of Sayyidatina Maryam, the purity, the sincerity, the ikhlas, all of it is combined in Sayyidatina Maryam alayhi salam. In fact, there is a minority opinion. Although the majority believe she is wali, there is a minority opinion saying she is nabi. Wajada indaha rizqa. He comes to the mihrab. She is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends her fruits. Wajada indaha rizqa. Fruits out of season. You see, if it was just fruits, it's one thing. But it was fruits out of season. So immediately Sayyidina Zakaria knows this is not coming from anywhere in the marketplace. This can only come. Maryam, where did you get this? You know what she said? Look at yaqeen, huh? Conviction. She said, this is from Allah. How many times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered your prayer and you got a new car and people asked you, you made the dua, Ya Allah, give me a new car. It must have air conditioner, it must have sunroof, PDC, sports pack, 19 inch rims, all these things. You went into detail. When Allah gave it to you and somebody asked you, we, I got it from that store and I worked very hard. Nobody said, oh, Allah gave it to me. We never ever say that. You make, oh Allah, my wife can't give birth. Like Sayyidina Zakaria said, Ya Allah, please grant us to have a baby. I'm married five years now. Baby comes. Alhamdulillah, I went to Kingsbury in the hospital. They gave, they did something. Sorry, oh, let's say GMC, our brothers, let's support them. Free advertising. Nobody says, Allah. She said immediately, it is from Allah. You know what Sayyidina Zakaria did? And this is what I would like to share with you. Look at Sayyidina Zakaria Nabi. He immediately understood this is something special. The place is blessed. The time is blessed. The person Maryam alayhi salam is blessed. Allah is granting her barakah. Allah is granting her rizq. Immediately he understood the penny drop in his mind. I need to grab this opportunity. I need to take this opportunity before it goes away. If I have a need, 
And he has a haja. He is old in age. His wife is completely barren. There is no possibility in any way that he will ever be able to have a son. Because his wife is barren and he's way beyond the sell-by date. Immediately, Hunalika da'a Zakariya Rabba. Immediately, he, he turned into prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he asked Allah then and there, khususiyya of makan, khususiyya of zaman, and khususiyya of insan. It was a special time, it was a special place, and it was surrounded by special people. And Allah was granting his barakah, and his rahmah, and his khair, and his rizq. Immediately he saw, he understood the penny drop, and immediately he went down in prayer. Unalika da'a Zakariya Rabba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him in Surah Maryam. Granted him the glad tidings that he's going to have a son. And he says, how can I have a son, ya Allah? My wife is totally barren. But you know, we've been doing this the whole month. Allah has been making the impossibility a possibility. When he saved the basket of Musa, he was meant to die. He landed in the house of the palace of Pharaoh, Pharaoh, and he survived. Sayyidina Yusuf was thrown in the well, meant to die. Allah made him the Aziz of Egypt. Sayyidina Ibrahim was thrown into the fire. What did he say as he was being catapulted and his airborne into the fire? He says, Hasbun Allah wa ni'am al wakil. You heard tonight, the Prophet wasallam is in the cave. They are just literally centimeters away from them. And he says to Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, La tahsan, inna Allah ma'ana. This is what we learn. We need to have conviction. Not just this ritual in this fast life, fast pace of life, and everything is fast food, fast life, everything. We have reduced everything just to rituals, a few do's and a few don'ts. There's no more meaning. That's why even when we finish in Salah, even you don't know what you're reading. Even I don't know what I'm reading. It's such a ritual. No, Allahumma anta, ya Allah, you are Salam. And from you comes peace. And back to you, all peace goes back to you. We have turned everything into a ritual. That's why we want to know, ya Allah, we're making so much dua for our brothers in Palestine. What's, what kind of dua? What kind of dua? We are so caught up in the WhatsApp. And the fitna. There's no time to make sincere dua. And yes, Sayyidina Zakaria is teaching us how. He's calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with such fervor. And this is a Nabi. We must learn how to make dua from the Anbiya. And change our duas from just being ritual to spiritual. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To grant us that which is beneficial to us, Ya Allah. If it is not beneficial, Ya Allah, don't give it to us. Because I think something is good for me. But Allah, you know best my past, my present, and my future. Only grant it to me, Ya Allah, if it is beneficial. And that's why Sayyidina Zakaria, he went into this mode of making dua and choosing the opportunity and seizing the opportunity. The reason we're mentioning this tonight is an opportunity. Khususiyah of Makan, you're in the house of Allah. Khususiyah of Zaman, it could be Laylatul Qadr. Khususiyah of Insan, amongst you there could be one person who's a wali, whose heart is so pure, Qalbun Salim, just by virtue of his presence, everyone gets forgiven. But you have to go into munajah with Allah. You have to talk to Allah directly. 
you have to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah reminds us وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If my servant asks you about me, Ya Rasulullah, tell them that I am very close to them. أُجِيبُ دَعَوَةَ الدَّاعِ ذَا دَعَانِي I answer their dua as long as they call upon me. I answer their dua as long as they call upon me, Allah. Imagine if I want to now ask our brother Abu Bakr here something. And I say, Ya Abu Bakr, I need your help. But I'm not even looking at him, I'm looking the other way. Ya Abu Bakr, I need your help. I'm busy with my phone, oh, I need your help. Isn't it disrespectful? You're asking Allah for something and you're busy with WhatsApp? You're asking for Allah something and your heart is not even present? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why in the authentic hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ad-du'a huwa l'ibadah. Dua is ibadah. Try and understand this carefully. Like you make salah, you make Allahu Akbar, you are in ibadah. When you make dua, the same rules are applicable. Focusing and concentrating in salah with your ibadah, making dua to Allah, the same rules are applicable. Concentration, focus, yaqeen, communicating like you are in salah, communicating to Allah, believing that He is the only one that can answer you, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having hope that He will only do the best for you. In another Hassan hadith, Allah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ad-du'a mukhu ibadah Dua is the marrow in the bone of supplication. Dua is the brain of worship. Ad-du'a mukhu ibadah The reason we are mentioning this tonight, Ya Jamaat al-Muslimin, we have to get this connection right. And if you are not sincere and you are not focused and you are not tuned in to the right frequency in order to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'u rabbakum tadarru'u wa khufya innahu la yuhibbu al-mu'tati. وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَوْضِ بَعْدَ إِسْلَاحِهَا وَادْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَتَمَعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how to ask him in private, in secret, in humility with fear and longing and then there is the verses end in uh, gives us a secret if you want your du'as to be answered there is a way you can accelerate the process إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِّنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Surely the rahmah of Allah descends upon the muhsineen. So the one does good, Allah is saying after this, if you do good, my rahmah will come on you. So if you do random acts of kindness, if you are kind to other people, you are good to other people, you do good things for others, you are selfless, you put others before yourself. Allah says, rahmah will descend upon those that do good. Those that are muhsineen. And you also have to be patient. You have to have sabr. Sayyidina Ibrahim made a dua. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلَ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَ أَنَّ عَبُدَ الْأَسْلَامِ He made dua thousands of years ago. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered the dua at the time of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So everything has its time. But we have to look at the example of Sayyidina Zakaria. When he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was very clear. He said, I have never been disappointed in my du'as to you, Ya Allah. I have never been disappointed in my du'as to you, Ya Allah. I have not been disappointed in my du'as to you, Ya Allah. I and you, Ya Allah, I, you, it doesn't matter what is in between. It's just, it's just Allah, the creator, and the creation. What's in between is irrespective. 
Allah will always do the best for us. But the important thing is there's no barrier between the Creator and the creation. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us, نَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ I am closer to you than your jugular vein. Because He doesn't want us to create a distance and create a barrier between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All we need to do is tune in to the right frequency and focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have full conviction and yaqeen that Allah will answer my dua. And that's all I have to say for today. The ball is in your court, in my court. If we want to make this morning successful, the du'as that you make, the good thoughts you have in your mind, the quality and not the quantity of your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your munajah where you speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. And when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can I give you a little bit of a secret? Go big or go home? Go big or go home? You don't have to ask little things. Ask big. Because Allah's treasury is not limited to how small we think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's treasury is vast. Ask whatever you want. But just remember, Ya Allah, grant it to me if it is beneficial for me. If I'm asking for hundred million dollars and you grant it to me tomorrow, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy. May Allah grant all of you hundred million dollars. See, look, the Amin came first. Quick. That was the quickest Amin I got today. But if it means that after I get hundred million dollars, I don't make salah anymore. I gamble. I do the vices. I forget Allah. Ya Allah, don't even give me one dollar. If, if that material thing I ask, Ya Allah, is going to make me forget about you, Ya Allah, don't grant it to me. Grant me that which is beneficial. If you grant it to me, Ya Allah, if it brings me closer to you, it makes me a better human being. I help others. يُحِبَّ لِأَخِي مَا يُحِبَّ لِنَفْسِي I wish for others what I wish for myself. Then Ya Allah, grant it to me. Ask the right things. Be patient. Remember Sayyidina Zakaria. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Sayyidina Zakaria was granted the most beautiful son in Yahya. Yahya was granted to Sayyidina Zakaria. He was, some say, over 100 years old. And his wife, similar age, completely barren. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them Yahya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also grant you the impossibility. But what's the most important thing you should ask for is husn al-khatima. Al-a'malu bil khawatim. All your life's actions is dependent and sealed upon your final moments. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a good ending. For husn al-khatima. Ilahi najjina min kulli hammin wa ghammin bi jahi al-mustafa mawla al-jami'i. وَهَبْ لَنَا فِي مَدِينَتِهِ قَرَارًا بِإِيمَانٍ وَسُكْنًا بِالْبَقِيعِ Allah grant me debt in Medina, in the neighborhood of Al-Mustafa, and let my final resting place be Jannatul Baqi. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us the hidayat and tawfiq to maximize tonight, insha'Allah, so that he answers our du'as. Don't forget to ask for the ummah. Don't forget to ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the hearts of our community and does not divide us and make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate the conditions and the difficult conditions of the ummah of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in other parts of the world as well as in our land. Make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant housing to the people of South Africa, grant employment to the oppressed people of South Africa and make it easy for the people in the townships and may Allah grant us the hidayat and tawfiq to spend little time fighting each other and spend more time balighu anni wa spreading the beautiful message with beautiful actions to the people of our country and other parts of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people who follow out of love the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and develop an intense love in our hearts 
for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because ultimately it is the love for Allah and the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that will become a means for our true salvation. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.